the last part of the Spider-Man review series, I want to look at two landmark titles in the Spider-Man game franchise. Both Enter Electro and, and Shattered Dimensions are both crucial in showing how the Spider-Man series has evolved over the span of a decade. Enter Electro was able to take advantage of being one of the first Spider-Man games to be in 3D, and Shattered Dimension shows just how kick-ass a Spider-Man game can be. Enter Electro is a bit hard to review by today's standards, in fact it would be downright wrong to compare it like that. Enter Electro is basically the same as the first Spider-Man game on PlayStation, with the bonus of now having levels set on the ground. The story is your standard Saturday morning cartoon narrative. Electro wants to power up a device that will give him ultimate control over his powers, so to do this he teams up with Sandman and Hammerhead. Each level has Spider-Man getting closer to Electro while beating up random thugs and other supervillains like Shocker and the Lizard. Levels are short and simple, but you're almost always given something different to do in each level. You might need to find keys to a bomb, stop a plane from hitting a wall, power up a door in a train yard, and destroy power generators, and more. What's great about each level is the design. There are hardly any limitations on where you can go and how you progress through the level. You can beat up criminals, or just head to the mission objective, search around for different web cartridges or comics. Webbing around the environment is a bit restrictive in that you can only web in one direction, and moving while web swinging is pretty much up to the game. The boss fights are also really cool, in fact, some of them show a lot more innovation than some of the more recent games in the series. Battling Sandman requires you to pump water into a valve, and then release it on him in order to inflict damage. And battling the lizard has you developing an antidote first, that you then have to shoot at the lizard in order to damage him. And that's really all there is to enter Electro, and it's great! As the second Spider-Man game in 3D, this, this must have looked awesome back in the day. Today we take advantage of open world cities and free web swinging. So playing this game really makes you appreciate some of the more recent games. If you haven't played this game, you really should check it out as it's basically the blueprint that all future Spider-Man games would build off of. But now let's get to the game that everybody wants to see. If Enter Electro is the humble beginnings of the 3D Spider-Man games, then Shattered Dimensions is the pinnacle of all of the 3D Spider-Man games. Dimensions is basically a love letter to Spider-Man fans as it includes four different versions of the webhead and a bunch of classic Spider-Man villains. The story has Spider-Man trying to stop Mysterio from stealing an artifact called the Tablet of Time, but during the fight, Spider-Man, you guessed it, shatters it, and learns from Madam Web that now all of reality has gone all timey-wimey. So the game is set in four different dimensions, The Amazing, Ultimate, Noir, and 2099. Each one has a different creative design. Amazing and Ultimate have different shell-shaded looks, Noir invokes styles of film Noir with dark shadows, and 2099 is bright and futuristic. Each Spider-Man also has different abilities and moves. The Amazing Spider-Man has your basic quick attacks and web shooting. Ultimate Spider-Man has the Venom Suit, which allows him to enter a rage mode to inflict more damage. Noir Spider-Man is all about stealth attacks and sticking to the shadows. And Spider-Man 2099 has an accelerator ability slowing down time for the bad guys. And there are segments when you can free fall. But the best part by far are the voice actors that they got for the four Spider-Men. Neil Patrick Harris voices Amazing, Christopher Daniel Barnes voices Noir, Josh Keaton voices Ultimate, and Dan Gilvezane voices 2099. For those unaware, each of these actors has voiced Spider-Man before. Harris was the voice in the short-lived MTV Spider-Man cartoon show. Barnes was the voice in the 90s series on Fox Kids. Keaton was the voice in the Spectacular Spider-Man. And Gilvezane was the voice in Spider-Man and His Amazing Friends, which aired way back in the 80s. Each Spider-Man is fun to play, and thankfully there's never a moment when you have to say crap, I have to play as that Spider-Man again. If anything, you might find it hard to choose which Spider-Man you're going to play as, since the game does allow freedom in which order you choose to access the levels. I usually pick the levels based on which villain I wanted to see next. The one negative I have to give the game isn't even really related to the gameplay, it's just that the game is really buggy and has a ton of game crash and glitches. I had this on both the 360 and the PS3, and they both have a long list of these glitches. The 360 version would have disc red errors, freeze and not load at times, while the PS3 version would also freeze, not load certain sections of the game, get enemies stuck in the wall, and force me to reset my console. This is the only problem I really have with the game. I mean, the constant crashing is ridiculous, and what's even worse is that this game came out back in 2010, and since then there's been no attempt whatsoever to try and patch this game up. I mean, this is an awesome game, and it could have been perfect if the developers had just fixed out these bugs. But now you're probably wondering why I'm only showing footage from, like, the first four levels of the game. Well, that's because my PS3 copy refused to load any more of the game past the first level with Ultimate Spider-Man. I restarted the game, cleaned the disc, restarted the system, started the game over twice, changed the position of my PlayStation, and finally reinstalled the whole game. And if you're wondering why I saved this game for last and didn't bother reviewing it after Web of Shadows, well, I've been trying to get this game to work for the last two months while doing the other reviews. I used to have the game on the 360 and I beat it years ago, and I recently rebought it for the PS3 for the review series. Not that the 360 version was any better, it too would fail to often read the disc and freeze up as well, so I don't think my chances would have improved if I had kept the 360 version. On a bit of a final note, if you watched my initial video about the Spider-Man review series, you might remember that I said I would also talk about the 90s cartoon show and the spectacular Spider-Man. 
I was hoping to make separate videos for each of these, but I ran into a bit of trouble for both. First, the 90s show has never actually received a box set of all of the episodes, just collections have been released with a handful of episodes. These collections were often released alongside the movies, and therefore they only feature episodes with villains that were contained in the films. So unfortunately, I couldn't find any footage of the final few episodes of the show that have Spider-Man teaming up with other heroes to beat the team of supervillains assembled by the Beyonder, and the episode when Spider-Man teams up with his alternate self to defeat Spider-Carnage. So real quick, I'll just give you my thoughts on the show. To describe it in one word, I would definitely go with nostalgic. I mean, I grew up watching the show as a kid, and I still like watching it almost 15 years later. True, looking back, the show is a tad cheesy, and some of the lines between Spider-Man and the villains are a bit corny. But it's still awesome. I mean, there was a crap load of Marvel characters that used to make cameos like the Punisher, Blade, the X-Men, Iron Man, War Machine, and even Captain America. The voice acting is great, and it's a damn shame that the soundtrack for the show was never officially released because it's superb. And then there's Spectacular Spider-Man. I tried uploading some clips through another account I have on YouTube and kept running into copyright issues, and YouTube kept taking down the video. I ran into some similar problems with Spider-Man 3 and the Amazing Spider-Man reviews. Unfortunately, the tricks that I used there apparently don't work anymore. So again, I'll have to sum up my thoughts real quick. Spectacular is the only word I would use to describe this show. It takes a lot of the cornier aspects of the 90s show and makes it completely epic. It's smartly scripted, it had funny one-liners, great story arcs, and awesome animation. And the show was going so well, until Disney stepped in. I mean, Disney screwed all of the fans of the show when they bought Marvel. The deal was basically that Sony could keep making the Spider-Man movie, so long as they released one before the rights expired, while Disney would get control over all of the TV properties related to the character. So shortly after the deal went through, Spectacular got the axe. And it couldn't have happened at a worse time. Peter and Gwen looked like they were finally going to get together, only Harry was forcing them to stay apart after Spider-Man killed his father, who was revealed to be the Green Goblin in the series finale, but it turned out Norman was actually still alive, and then nothing. Show cancelled. A big middle finger to anyone who cared about the show, and for what? To replace it with that piece of shit Ultimate Spider-Man that's currently on Disney Channel right now? Drake Bell is probably one of the worst actors who has ever voiced Spider-Man, and the show is just so juvenile, totally being aimed at children. And really, let's be honest here, all Ultimate Spider-Man really cares about is having the Avengers show up every few episodes, because, you know, the Avengers movie made a shitload of money, so if we put them in the show, it's gonna be popular. God, I just hate you, Disney. You ruined everything. You bastards better not ruin Star Wars. So overall, what have we learned from all these different Spider-Man games? Well, there are some good, and some not so good. If anything is clear, the games certainly have come a long way in the past decade. They've continued to evolve, sometimes for the best, and sometimes not so much. With the next Spider-Man movie not due out for another few years, it's likely to assume that we probably will be getting an original Spider-Man title really soon. Hopefully the developers will learn from past mistakes, take all of the good aspects of the series and drop all of the issues. There have been some bright spots along the way, and who knows, maybe one day we will get a Spider-Man game that we can truly call amazing.